So if you're in the business of shipping dangerous goods, handling dangerous goods, carrying dangerous goods, it's important that you have the most up-to-date information. Without that, you don't know if you're doing it properly. And if you're a shipper, you can get caught out because your shipments may now be refused because you're using out-of-date information. And that's frustrating. And in fact, your customers are not happy because the shipment's been delayed. They haven't got it when they want it. And obviously for freight forwarders, ground handlers and airlines, it's important because safety is the number one priority. And if you don't have the latest information, you may not be doing it properly. But what I'm doing is providing information on the changes that you'll see in the Dangerous Goods publications uh, from 2021. So that's in the Dangerous Goods Regulations, in the Infectious Substance Shipping Guidelines, the ISSG, and the Lithium Battery Shipping Guidelines, the LBSG. There's been a lot of work going on for a number of years to move towards competency-based training and assessment for dangerous goods. And this will come into effect as of next year with a two-year transitional period. So subsection 1.5 and the DGR will be completely changed to reflect the competency-based training and assessment approach. Um, but to make sure that people still have access to the information that we see in this year's book, uh, 1.5 has been moved to attachment A in Appendix H. So it's there for people that are needing more time to transition to competency-based training and assessment. And this is very important for the industry to get right and taking the extra time is important. Looking at the book, we also have changes from the UN with new UN numbers and revisions to UN numbers. So we have uh, new UN numbers for electronic detonators, for medical waste in category A, and for air transport, we have changed fish meal stabilised to make that permitted on both passenger aircraft and cargo aircraft. And the reason for that is that the, the fish meal industry has a need to move this product around and having looked at the properties, there's no reason for it to remain as forbidden. Through the book, we also have changes in the packing instructions, uh, updates to ISO standards for section six, um, and there's a reasonable amount of change for those people involved in the transport of radioactive materials. As in section 10, we've incorporated all of the changes coming from the International Atomic Energy Agency in their update to SSR 6 revision one. Uh, more information is available on our website and you can see that and go to the link that you see below. Looking ahead, infectious substances. Well, through the coronavirus pandemic, the regulations around infectious substances have been absolutely critical. And very early on, it was identified in discussions with the World Health Organization, WHO, that indeed the provisions that we have for the transport of infectious substances uh, are appropriate for the movement of specimens of coronavirus. And it was agreed that in fact, in alignment with what was done for SARS and MERS, that specimens of coronavirus being sent for diagnosis or investigation are category B and therefore UN 3373. And this allows them to move very easily and very quickly, which is absolutely critical for healthcare. We continue to review the provisions that are in place for lithium batteries. Uh, they're very, very widely transported. They're a very important commodity for consumer products and increasingly for industry, but they do pose safety concerns if not properly tested, properly designed, properly packed and declared so everybody in the transport chain knows what's going on. So we've made some changes around special provisions. We have special provision A88 and A99. Currently, these only require the approval of the authority of the state of origin. And the ICAO Dangerous Goods Panel believe that that was not in accordance with other special provisions for approvals, such as A1, A2, where it's both the state of origin and the state of the operator. After all, it is going on an airline, an aircraft, and that state should have a say in the approval. So A88 and A99 have been changed to bring in approval of the state of the operator. Um, we've modified packing instructions for lithium batteries contained in equipment. 
particularly in section two, where we're seeing more used equipment being shipped, either for, mainly for refurbishing. And yet there was nothing in the packing instruction that required the equipment to be packed so that it was protected from damage by knocking against other pieces of equipment. It was always assumed, we're talking about new equipment, which were typically in retail packagings. So we brought in new provisions there. So again, this information is on our website. I'd urge you to go and look at that. And of course, buy the products, have the latest information, whether you're shipping broadly dangerous goods, the dangerous goods regulations, if you're involved in the healthcare industry and your focus is on infectious substances, the infectious substances shipping guidelines, or you're involved in lithium batteries, in which case the LBSG is the product that best meets your needs. Thank you very much.